So you've gotten yourself a small shiny black refrigerator called the Xbox Series X, and with that Microsoft exclusives still some months away, what games should you play that take advantage of all that gaming horsepower? These are the games that have specifically had improvements made to them that take advantage of the Xbox Series X hardware. Many, if not all, backwards compatible games see improvements compared to the One X and the base Xbox One, but these are the best games that take it to the next level with increased resolutions and frame rates to show off what the hardware can do, even if each varies in terms of how good the game actually is, in my opinion. These are the ones to usher in a new console generation. I'm basing this list on the enhancements itself and how it takes advantage of next-gen hardware, not just whether I think the game is worthwhile playing. Of course, if you can, please like, share, subscribe, comment or hit me up on Twitter but with that out of the way, let's check out the games you should be playing on the Xbox Series X. Let's begin with one of the latest games, and that's Assassin's Creed Valhalla, where Ubisoft try and create what seems like the largest open world ever, with an almost never-ending story to go with it. This almost rewrites the rulebooks as to just how much can be jam-packed into one game, and all of it is up for debate as to how good it actually is, but Valhalla is one great looking game most of the time. Seeing the snow covered landscapes or the trees and vegetation stretch out into the distance as the sun glows high in the sky and saturates everything in an orange glow. It looks gorgeous. Then we get to the armor and weapons, which have a level of detail that the series hasn't had before to this level. The character models can vary in terms of quality, and the animation can be a bit hit or miss and a bit stiff at times, but you'll have many moments where you'll either be taking screenshots or clips of Valhalla. The star of the show is the lighting, and when it's out in all of its glory, the game looks stunning. I stick with the performance mode for that smoother frame rate, plus it still looks great as well. Next up, we take a trip back in time to a fan favorite series, and that's Borderlands 3. Even with the new powerful hardware, it won't make up for the lackluster story and annoying villains in the main campaign, but the improvements to the visuals, and especially performance, is while you want to check this game out again, or for the first time. On the One X, this game would struggle in performance mode, with regular dips below 60 frames a second, even when not a whole lot was happening on screen. But now on Series X, the game maintains a higher resolution and frame rate more of the time. It also introduces three and four player split screen for some great couch co-op play. If there was ever a time to play Borderlands 3, then it's now, as the new consoles give it the performance boost it deserves. Up next, we have another loot-based shooter, and it's Destiny 2 Beyond Light. With the Series X and PS5, this is the technical update that console gamers have been screaming for. The reason many moved over to the PC when Destiny 2 first launched. Higher resolutions and frame rates, running at 4K and at 60 frames a second, Destiny 2 has never felt better on console, and hopefully 30 frames a second shooters are now a thing of the past, never to return especially when they're competitive. But the update also introduces a field of view slider, just like on PC, which allows gamers to see more of the environment at any one time. And for anyone with a TV which supports 120 Hertz, players can now enjoy the Crucible at that higher frame rate of 120. All games get improved loading times, but when you sit through as many, and for so long, especially for long time Destiny fans such as myself, this is the update which literally changes the game for the better. The game itself is in a big transition phase at the moment, but it performs and runs so much better now. The art design just looks even more spectacular. Next up, we have Watch Dogs Legion, and this newer game also benefits a lot from the increase in power, just not in as many areas, but it is one of the first games to implement ray tracing. This makes the world much more believable with realistic reflections in puddles, shop windows, or seeing the environment being reflected in all of the cars. Watch Dogs Legion is a great looking game overall, especially its world, even if it does run at 30 frames a second, but it's not too much of an issue. But all of the frame drops, stutters, and screen tearing, especially when driving from the One X version, are gone, and we are left with a constant and smooth frame rate on Microsoft's next-gen system. With better shadow quality and geometry, Watch Dogs Legion is a cross-gen game to test out on your new system. Now, this is the spot where I was going to include Call of Duty Black Ops 4, but considering that the most impressive thing with that was how often it crashed or froze, 
This position deservedly goes to No Man's Sky, and hopefully it's been long enough since launch for people to get rid of the bad taste out of their mouths, because not only is No Man's Sky basically the game that was promised, and even more, it's just a whole round better experience on next-gen hardware. On Series X, the game gets bumped up to 4K60 with improved shadows and draw distances, and much more denser worlds, with more flora and fauna everywhere you look. You can create more complex bases, and the multiplayer aspect has been increased to 32 players on consoles now. Of course, you get faster load times as well, which is especially welcomed in this game. So if you've never played No Man's Sky at all, or haven't in a long time, then there's no better time than now. With several large content drops already, it's now even better with the power of the Xbox Series X. We then switch gears over to Ori and the Will of the Wisps which already looks stellar at 4K60 on the One X, even if it did have performance issues at launch when I reviewed it. But now with the Series X, the game actually runs at 6K60 and is downscaled for 4K TVs, and the world of Ori comes to life like never before. For those with a capable TV, you'll be able to run it at 120 frames a second, which takes an already beautiful game and makes it exquisite. The jump from 60 to 120 may not be as beneficial to many when compared to 30 frames to 60, but the more games with 120 options leading into the future can only be a good thing. Don't overlook this gem of a game. From a technical and design standpoint, Ori is at the top of the class. Next, we have another Ubisoft game, and this time it's the new IP of Immortals Phoenix Rising. Taking a more artistic look with its visual design, this stands shoulder to shoulder with the other Ubisoft titles of Watch Dogs Legion and Valhalla, and in some aspects, surpasses both. Another game with quality and performance mode options. The slight increase in visual fidelity is not enough for the drop in frame rate for me personally. From its gorgeous landscapes and draw distances that stretch off far, this isn't just an incredibly fun game to play, it's one to stop and take screenshots of. And not only is it an excellent Enhanced Series X game, it's one of the best games on the list. Colourful and vibrant, Phoenix Rising is right at home on next-gen systems. Then we get to what is perhaps the best overall package in gaming with just how much content it has, and it's Halo The Master Chief Collection. With the introduction of the Series X, players can now play at as close to 4K as possible at 60 frames a second, plus with the benefit of higher graphical settings than before, but again, for those lucky enough to have a TV capable of 120Hz, now you can play single or two-player split-screen at 120 frames a second, with four-player split-screen being at 60 frames a second. When playing at 60, there is also an option now to change the field of view, which has been basically unheard of on consoles until this generation. This collection has had its issues over the years, but Halo has never looked or played better, and it's almost perfect for experiencing this series for the first time. Next, we have Forza Horizon 4, which was already a brilliant looking and performing game, and one which I've always said would look amazing, even if it was just a track racer. But considering it's open world, it's just even more impressive. Gone are the quality or performance options from the One X version, and now it's all 4K at 60, with increased graphical details such as shadows and particle effects. Reflections also get some work too, and overall, it's just a better version of what was already a fantastic looking game. Once again though, the main benefit here is that higher frame rate, but thanks to the Series X, you don't need to forfeit a higher resolution to get it. And lastly, we have one of Xbox's biggest franchises, and it's Gears 5. Already an incredible looking game on even the base Xbox One. It was taken up a notch on Xbox One X, where the game ran at a dynamic 4K60, a bump up from Gears of War 4, which ran at 60 frames a second, but only when running at 1080p. But with Gears 5, the resolution is still dynamic, but it hits a higher target more often, while still retaining that 60 frames. But the game also gets the ultra settings of the PC version, so everything in the world looks much crisper and cleaner, with a higher level of detail further off into the distance, plus the addition of more reflections as well. Gears 5 also gets an enhanced lighting system, which isn't even on the PC version of the game yet. This game went from stunning to basically jaw-dropping now, and is a shining example of how older games can be improved upon with more powerful hardware. All of these games are worth revisiting if you've played them before, but if you haven't, 
you'll be experiencing them in the best possible state they've been in on console. With the Xbox Series X not having been out for too long, more and more games, both new and old, will be enhanced for the system and be taking advantage of such a leap in power. So there's my Xbox Series X best enhanced games. If you'd like me to make a video focusing on a particular game or type of games, then please let me know down below. Give the video a thumbs up or a share, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next video.